This is what happens when automobile traffic becomes too heavy to handle. Out in the West Texas, New Mexico area, automobile traffic is not the problem, but traffic of another kind, the transmission of thousands of electronic signals. Here in this land of desert and mountains are located many of the nation's most important military installations. For example, the U.S. Army Air Defense Center at Fort Bliss, Texas. The Army Air Defense Board. White Sands Missile Range. The Air Force Missile Development Center. Kirtland Air Force Base. Walker Air Force Base. Biggs Air Force Base, Cannon Air Force Base, U.S. Navy installations, aircraft control and warning stations, and other military activities. These Army, Navy, and Air Force installations literally fill the air with radio signals. Signals of low, high, very high, ultra-high, and microwave frequencies. But the military installations are not the only users of the electromagnetic spectrum. Its use is shared with civil and other government agencies, such as the Defense Atomic Support Agency, federal, state, county, and municipal police, the Forestry Service, the Federal Aviation Administration, the Los Alamos Laboratories, television stations, commercial airlines, private aircraft. In this area of few people but many transmitters, the Army tests its newest weapons, missiles that in most cases are guided to their targets by electromagnetic signals. Even more electronic devices are used to evaluate missile performance. For example, watch what happens when this missile fires at white sand. By the time the missile leaves its launcher, one of the heaviest concentrations of electronic transmitting and receiving equipment in the nation goes into action. Here, in support of missile programs of all three services, the Army operates radar systems of all types. Dovap Doppler systems, microwave nets, television, countermeasure devices, Telemetry systems, ground-to-ground -ground radio, ground-to-air, command control, air-to-air -air and other systems, all emitting electromagnetic energy. Successful operation of all these systems at White Sands and throughout the area depends upon a single limited resource of nature, the radio frequency spectrum. At White Sands, on the very day that the first German V-2 was fired, it was clear that organized control of the radio spectrum was essential for successful missile testing in this area. This meant that the allocation and usage of frequencies had to be coordinated for all the military services within effective receiving range of the testing areas. Accordingly, the position of area frequency coordinator was established in 1948. Since then, all coordinators have been signal officers appointed by the Army Chief Signal Officer with Navy and Air Force concurrence. The coordinator's area of responsibility includes New Mexico and that portion of Texas within 150 miles of White Sands. His mission, designated by an element of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, is to coordinate assignment and usage of all military frequencies and to minimize radio interference. In operational support of the coordinator is the frequency division of the U.S. Army Signal Missile Support Agency. The division, although located at White Sands, provides frequency allocation and coordination services to agencies throughout the area. Here, an Air Force officer's request for a frequency assignment is being processed. A new requirement is analyzed to see how use of the requested frequency might influence use of previously assigned frequencies. Each machine card carries such information on a particular frequency as emission characteristics, maximum power approved, source and expiration date of authorization, 
and the user's equipment locations. Once the frequency selection is made, approval is recommended to the higher headquarters of the service concerned. Should unforeseen conflict in assignments arise, action is taken locally to make readjustments. The area coordinator and his staff are kept busiest by the area of greatest equipment concentration, the Air Defense Center, other installations in the El Paso area, and nearby White Sands Missile Range. White Sands is so heavily instrumented and use of radiating equipment is so extensive that most range operations are coordinated on the basis of a precise time schedule. Use of critical bands or spot frequencies may be scheduled on either a geographical or time sharing basis. However, scheduling alone does not ensure interference free operations. To make certain that equipment brought to the range for testing does not radiate unwanted harmonics or spurious emissions, the signal agency provides laboratory services for range users, such as frequency and power calibrations, radiation studies, and systems evaluations to determine spectrum utilization and interference susceptibility. In the past, equipment has been brought into the area which was not compatible with existing equipment. For example, Transmitters on critical frequencies, which, while in operation, required a number of other projects to stay off the air. To prevent such occurrences, every effort is made to ensure in the first place that range users procure equipment with optimum usage of the frequency spectrum in mind. To facilitate frequency usage, the agency operates an extensive monitoring system. Facilities are maintained at Albuquerque. At North Oscura Peak on the White Sands Range. At Sacramento Peak. At Holloman Air Force Base. At the White Sands Firing Areas. And at El Paso, Texas. This complex of facilities monitors the spectrum from 100 kilocycles to 12,000 megacycles. Purpose, to locate interference and to advise authorized users if they are on the correct frequency and whether or not their equipment is functioning properly. Inside the stations, panoramic adapters and spectrum analyzers indicate the spectrum usage of a particular signal. Field intensity meters give quantitative signal strength measurements. Pulse analysis equipment determines width, rate, and spacing of pulse groups. And a wide variety of highest quality recording and test equipment is employed. Quite often, transmissions are detected in silence bands. Cab number 105 calling dispatcher. Cab number 105 calling dispatcher. Immediately, direction finding equipment goes into operation. When the source of interference is outside the area, either coordination must be effected to silence the interfering signal or a change to another frequency made. Interference sources spotted within the area must be investigated. Perhaps a piece of equipment is radiating spurious or harmonic signals. A receiver may lack good rejection characteristics. Overall selectivity may not be good enough, or IF isolation may be poor. To assist operating agencies in correcting such defects, agency monitoring personnel stand ready. When firings take place at temporary remote range locations, semi-fixed monitoring facilities may be required as well as mobile facilities. High overhead airborne monitoring equipment searches for interfering signals not detectable on the ground. Costly missile malfunctions might result if such signals are not detected and silenced. A jet drone target plane is also in the air. It is controlled by ground-based UHF radio. Everything checked out, no interference detected, 
The final countdown goes on cue. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, fire! Let's take a look at a test when everything didn't go so smoothly. This is Sergeant Project Command. Time is running at X minus 10 minutes. X minus 10 minutes. Monitoring personnel closely watch all frequencies to be used. This particular antenna is checking out telemetry channels to ensure reception from the missile during flight. At chain radar stations like this one, technicians check their instruments. Miles away at this minute, a radar crew is busily training. The operator tunes his set, checks the frequency meter. He has no way of knowing at this time that the meter has a defective component and is giving an erroneous reading. As a result, the set is tuned to the wrong frequency. Meanwhile, monitoring stations continue their check on frequencies to be used during the test. Direction finding operations begin, both here and in another station some miles away. Only minutes remain, but every effort must be made to find and eliminate the interference. If the firing must be delayed or even canceled altogether, it means a loss of expensive range time. Firing schedules are crowded and rescheduling for another day slows vital missile development. Now the general area of the interference source has been located. Another monitoring station is called for help. Circle Bravo, this is Circle Whiskey, over. Circle Whiskey, this is Circle Bravo, over. We have a fix on Oscar Hotel, plus 10, 190. Mobile unit will be required to pinpoint interference source, out. This mobile monitoring station will be used to track down the offending signal which is coming from an area where there is much electronic equipment. Sergeant Project Command. We are holding at X minus five minutes. X minus five minutes. Now the antenna locks on the source of interference. This is Sergeant Project Command, holding at X minus five minutes. Interference eliminated, the test can proceed. So, prompt action by the alert guardians of the radio spectrum makes possible a successful test. White Sands experience in frequency coordination 
has demonstrated repeatedly the importance of good equipment design, planned well in advance for effective and economical spectrum usage. Experience has also made clear that the coordinator and his staff must be kept informed of such factors as changes in locations of equipment, plans for future operations, and technical characteristics of radiating and receiving equipment to be used. Moreover, the daily battle to eliminate causes of radio interference at White Sands Missile Range has provided much valuable information to the tactical planners of our modern army, as well as a fund of experience to be used if our missiles are ever fired, not for test, but in combat. For we know that victory in a war of the future may well go hand in hand with victory in controlling the radio frequency spectrum. <laughs>